Yes, the Spirit of the Lord is moving right now in the world and in His church. Just when the hope of many is fading, God is restoring back hope. As the strength of people is failing, God is increasing strength to many. As many a heart driven away from God to sin and unrighteousness, God is calling and raising men and women in righteousness and truth, gathering them from the ends of the earth unto Himself and into His glorious church. God is calling you right now to come and be part of this great move of the Holy Spirit. Join us in Christ in You Glory Church every week on our Sunday Holy Convocation service to celebrate God in praises and worship and to lift up our voice in prayer and supplication. For He hears the prayers of His people. At Christ in You Glory Church, you can be sure that the Word of God that comes through His servant, Pastor Anthony Adichile, will meet your need. Now may the Lord grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Christ in You Glory Church, developing a people of righteousness, a planting of God. Our Father in heaven, we thank you because you are faithful and true. We give you praise because you are the Lord that beats us to come to you. And Lord, this morning, we desire to come up the mountain and for you, the cloud of your glory to descend on the mountain and for your presence to be there, for we to have fellowship with you. This we ask in Christ Jesus' holy name. Amen. So we are talking about breaking up the fallow ground. Of course, before we can reach the heights that I have just described to you, the heights where Moses was able to uh, scale the highest mountain and experience God's glory for 40 days and 40 nights, before we can get to that point, before we can even begin at all, we need to stand and we need to start from the place of breaking up of fallow ground. We need to begin at the point of breaking up the fallow ground. And shortly we are going to be looking at what fallow ground is and what it means to break up fallow ground. But what we have described in this passage of scripture was a situation where the people of God went up the mountain and they had fellowship with the Lord. Praise God. But what we did not read was what Moses did with the people, the entire people of Israel, before they went to the mountain. Before they went to the mountain. Praise God. And that's still in that passage of scripture that we read in Exodus 24. In verse 3, the Bible says, and So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offering and sacrificed peace offering of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, has said, we will do and be obedient. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. Breaking up the fallow ground. I have identified only three passages of scripture and only three passages in the scriptures where fallow ground was mentioned. Perhaps there are more but these three that I have identified are significant for this message this morning. And so the text that we'll be taking uh, our message from is from the book of Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1. 
this is one of the passages of scripture and it is instructive it is significant the bible says from that jeremiah chapter 4 from verse 1 the bible says god said if you will return o israel says the lord return to me and if you will put away your abominations out of my sight then you shall not be moved and you shall swear the lord lives in truth in judgment and in righteousness the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him they shall glory verse 3 for thus says the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns circumcise yourselves to the lord and take away the false kings of your heart you men of judah and inhabitants of jerusalem lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings hosea chapter 10 verse 12 The Bible says, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Till he comes and rains righteousness on you. And so we can see from this passage of scripture that we've read that in order for God to come, in order for God to reign righteousness on the people of God, they must need to do something. And that thing is to break up the fallow ground. To break up the fallow ground. So let us try and understand what fallow ground means. Fallow ground is an untilled, uncultivated, abandoned ground. It's a ground that is not cared for. It's a ground that is left for anything to just tread on it. Fallow ground is a ground that, you know, you can do anything to. In fact, no one lays claim to a fallow ground. If you have a fallow ground around here, for example, you will see someone passing by with a wrap of biscuit, for example, and as the person passes by, he throws the wrap of biscuit on the fallow ground. When you look at fallow ground, you see all manner of weed growing on fallow ground. When you look closely at any fallow ground, you will not only see weed growing, you will see thorns also growing on fallow ground. So fallow ground is a land that belongs to everyone. It's a land that belongs to everyone, even though there is, there, is a, there is a particular person that can lay claim to that land. But as long as that land is fallow, anyone, anyone can lay claim to it. Anyone can exercise some right to a fallow ground because it is abandoned. It is not cared for by the owner. Someone owns the land, but everyone uses the land. Someone owns the land, but anything goes on the land. Someone owns the land, but everyone can do anything on that land. Because the land is what? Abandoned. Because the land is uncultivated 
Because the land, the land is not, is not cherished by the owner. Because the land is, the, the land as far as the owner is concerned, the land is of no value at that time. Praise the Lord. That, brethren, is what fallow ground means. That is what fallow ground means. If we look into another passage of scripture, we have read from Jeremiah chapter 4 and Hosea chapter 10. But let us look also at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 23, just to see something again about fallow ground. This is the third passage of scripture that talks about fallow ground. And on this passage of scripture, it says, Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor. So what this means also is that the person that owns the fallow ground could be a poor person. But you see, in that fallow ground, that fallow ground has great potential. That fallow, that fallow ground that that person who owns the land is careless about has the potential to make that person to be a wealthy person. There is great value on any ground. There is great value on the, any ground. If you, if you have possession of a ground, for example, if you have a plot of land, that land is of value. But you see, until you begin to use, until you begin to, or you begin to understand that the land is of value, and you begin to use the land in, for the value that it possesses, you cannot get anything out of it you cannot get anything out of it and so the bible says much food is in the fallow ground of the poor so the poor person who owns the who owns the ground that is untilled the poor man the poor woman who owns the land that is fallow does not recognize there is great that there is great potential in that ground there is great wealth in that ground. But you see, until the fallow ground is broken, until the fallow ground is broken, anything goes on that ground. Until the fallow ground is broken and the owner of the ground exercises ultimate authority and right over the ground, anything goes on the ground. That is why you and I must need to break our fallow ground. What does this mean to us? How does this apply to us? You see, <laughs> until you as a person recognize whom you are before the Lord, you are, you know, you know, your, what you allow in your life, what you allow in your life, you know, you are like that fallow ground. Okay? You are like that fallow ground. You know, until you recognize that you are of great value. Until you recognize that your life, your life is of great value. Until you recognize that your life is precious. Anybody can lay claim to your life. Until you recognize that your life has great potential. Until you recognize that your life, your life is of great value. Because God himself, God himself, has invested so much on you until you wake up to the fact that your life is of great importance to the Lord and of great importance to you. Anything can go. Anything can go. That is why if you look at, you know, our lives today, <laughs> because, because we do not place value on our life, we allow anything, we allow anything, anything to grow on us. We allow anything to go. Weeds grow on your fallow ground. Weeds grow on my fallow ground. As long as we have a ground that is fallow, weed will go on it. Weed will grow on it. Thorns will grow on it. So what do we mean by weed? What do we mean by thorns? What do we mean by weed and thorns? If you find a fallow ground, for example, 
if you have weed growing, of course, you can, no one, no one, no one can eat weed. No one, no one, no one has, um, no one can see weed as being of any value at all. In fact, when weed, what you, you gather weeds together and you do what? You burn it because it is useless. It is useless. What, 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 uh, what if you have tons on the fallow ground? What if you have tons there? You see, as long as there is thorn in that ground, whatsoever you put on that ground, whatsoever seed you plant on that ground will be snuffed out. It cannot grow. It cannot grow. So when you have Christians, when you have Christians who allow weed to grow on them, when you have Christians who allow thorns to grow on them, then you find that, you know, they cannot mature in the things of God. You find that, you know, they will continually be worldly because weed is typical of worldliness. Thorns is typical of whatsoever will sap out godliness in you. That is why the scripture says, break up your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. When we break up our fallow ground, we are more or less saying enough of wheat. We are saying enough of tons. We are doing away with whatsoever, whatsoever we deny us from fellowship with God. Whatsoever we deny us from, from you know, having precious, precious moments with the Lord. We are doing away with whatsoever is of no consequence at all. Because we want to gain heaven. Because we want to experience relationship and fellowship with God here. And we want to be with him when we leave the shores of this earth. That is why the scripture says, break up your fallow ground. If we break up our fallow ground, then, then, then God can start using that vessel. Then God can begin to do something on that ground. Why do we need to break fallow ground? Why do we need to break fallow ground? If we do not break fallow ground, we cannot be fruitful. If we do not break fallow ground, we cannot be productive. If we do not break fallow ground, we cannot be useful to the Lord. If we do not break fallow ground, we cannot be useful to ourselves. And we cannot be useful to the world. Remember. The fallow ground represents your life. And your life can only be useful to the Lord when you break it. It can only be useful when it is broken. When it is broken and the seed of righteousness is planted. Why do we need to break our fallow ground? Because we can only derive fulfillment when the ground is broken. We can only be enriched when the ground is broken. Imagine, I showed you the will of God when we started out. The will of God is for us to do what? To come to the highest mountain where we can have fellowship with the Lord. But we cannot do that. We cannot achieve that until the ground of our life is broken and we surrender to the Lord. Until we are able to say, I surrender my will. I surrender my will. Let your will be done. I surrender my will.
until until we come to that understanding we cannot be useful praise the lord much food is in the fallow ground of the poor i have made us to understand that fallow ground fallow ground is an abandoned land that anyone can tread upon so if you have a life that is not broken for the Lord to use. If you have a ground that is not broken for the Lord to use, just about anything can tread on that life. Just about anything can tread upon that ground. Demons, demons can tread upon that life. People can tread upon that life. As a matter of fact, all manner of worldliness, all manner of worldliness will jump on that life. That is when, that is when the person becomes worldly. Because the more weed grow on that ground, <laughs> the more weed grows, the more worldly the person becomes. And the more thorns grow on that ground, the less of God's word, the less of God's glory, the less of God's presence you find in that life, in that ground. So we must break the fallow ground. We are looking at the breaking of fallow ground. The breaking of fallow ground. Now you see, when you have a fallow ground, the moment the owner decides that this ground is of great value, I have to do something about it. The moment, the moment a man decides that the ground that has been fallow for so long a time can no longer be left that way, then you will find that the man will take charge of the ground. Immediately, the man will seal up whatsoever access anyone has to that fallow ground. So no one, no one can do anything to that ground. So it's like fencing the plot of ground. So that no one can pass through it. So that no one can pass through it. When the ground is fully secured, no one can do anything to the ground. No one can do anything to the ground. Not anymore. Because the owner of the ground has taken possession of that ground. What then will happen? The next thing that this person will do is to clear out all the weed and thorns on the ground. We are talking about breaking of the ground. Breaking of the fallow ground. The person will clear all the weed and thorns and he will burn them. Burn them. So when a man decides that it is time to break up the fallow ground, then that man will begin to do what? That man will first begin to return to the Lord. Because that is the first step. Sealing up the ground. Sealing up the ground. Securing it. So that no, nothing, nothing can tread upon that ground without permission. Are you with me? No one can tread upon the ground without permission. So if we look at Jeremiah quickly, let's look at Jeremiah again. Jeremiah chapter 4. What happened there? In verse 1, the Bible says, If you will return, O Israel, if you will return, if you decide to break up the fallow ground, if you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, 
if you will clear out all the weed, then you shall not be moved. If you will return and clear out all the abominations, clear out all the weed, clear out the wilderness, clear out everything that snuffs out godliness in you. If you will return, that means that translates into breaking up the fallow ground. Breaking up the fallow ground. If you will return. So like I said. You will need to seal up the ground. You will need to seal up the ground. When you seal up the ground. And then clear out the weed. Then. Then and then. God will begin to do something. Turn your Bibles quickly to Hosea. That we read earlier on too. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Hosea chapter 10. It says so for yourself righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Returning. Returning to the Lord. Is the same thing as seeking the Lord. It is time. The moment a man decides. That it is time to seek the Lord. The moment a man decides. That it is time to break up fallow ground. Then. Then, something will begin to happen to that land. Something will begin to happen to that ground. That ground will suddenly become of value. That ground will suddenly become precious. That ground will suddenly become secured. Praise the Lord. By returning to the Lord, by deciding to seek the Lord, our fallow ground can be broken. Amen. 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 As long as the fallow ground is not broken, whenever the word, whenever the word is sown, what happens to it? The weed, weed prevents it from growing. When, and whatsoever, whatsoever word grows, what will happen to it? Thorns will snuff it out. Thorns will kill it. So in order for you to seek the Lord, in order for me to seek the Lord, we will need to do what? We will need to turn away from unrighteousness. We will need to turn away from worldliness. We will need to turn away from whatsoever is ungodly. We will need, we will need to take a step. Amen. Now you see, until a ground is broken. Amen. Until a ground is broken, what happens? You cannot sow. You cannot sow on it. Until you break the fallow ground, you cannot sow the seed of righteousness. Until you break the fallow ground, you cannot sow the seed of God. The seed of God is meant to grow in the life of the individual. The seed of God is meant to grow. The seed of God is meant to grow. When you plant the seed. Amen. Look into the book of 1 John quickly. 1 John. 1 John chapter 7. Uh, chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We we'll read from verse 7 through to 9. It says, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy what? The works of the devil. Now look at verse 9. It says, whoever, whoever has been born of God does not sin. Why? For his seed remains in him. His seed remains in him. Praise God. You see, until... Until the ground is broken up. Until the weed is cleared. That, you know, whosoever has weed and thorns. Whosoever has a ground that is broken. Is not of God. You cannot be of God. And still have, you know. You, and still have weed growing on your ground. You cannot be of God. And still have thorns growing on your ground. You cannot be of God. And still have worldliness in you. It needs to be broken. The ground needs to be broken. 
the ground needs to be broken. When the ground is broken, then you and I, you and I will be able to do what? Allow the seed of God to be planted. If the seed of God is planted before the ground is broken, it's not going to grow. It's not going to grow. That's why you pe I pity those. Those who tell, you know, those who come to church. You know, they come to church and they call themselves Christians. And their ground is not yet broken. Their ground is not yet broken. So when they come, when they come, they hear the word. They come, they praise God, hear the word. But you see, no sooner after they leave the, leave, uh, the church, the weed, the weed in their ground, the thorns in their ground will snuff out and kill the word that they have heard. Because, because their ground has not been what? Broken. Until your ground is broken, the seed of God cannot be planted and grow. And, and grow. If it's planted, it's not going to grow. It's not going to grow. So the question is, do you want the seed of God <laughs> to be planted in you? If you want the seed of God to be planted in you, do you want that seed to grow? Do you want the seed to grow? And if the seed grows, how, 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 uh, what is the nature of growth that you desire? What is the nature of growth that you desire? What kind of tree do you expect to come out of that seed? What kind of seed do you want to come out of that seed? But recognize something. The moment your ground is broken, the moment you clear out the weed, the moment you clear out the, 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 the thorns, what then will happen? The moment your ground is secured, the first thing you will recognize is that wheat can no longer grow on your ground because you will not allow it. Are you with me? Wheat will no longer grow on that ground because you have sealed the ground up. You have sealed it up. Seed can no longer grow therein. That's one thing that happens. Thorns cannot grow on it. And so the ground is ready for planting. The ground is ready for planting. Then the seed of God can be planted. The seed of God can be planted. Now when the seed of God is planted, what follows? What follows? How can the seed of God grow? Listen. Hosea that we read, chapter 10, verse 12. He says God will do something. Hosea chapter 10 God will do something. In that chapter 12, uh, verse 12, he says, it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. So what it, what, means, what it means is that when the seed of God is planted on a ground, a fallow ground that has been broken, then God will rain the seed of righteousness God will rain upon, sorry, God will rain righteousness on that ground. God will rain righteousness on that ground. And then what will happen? Then the seed of God that has been planted will take roots. We take roots. We take roots and begin to grow. Begin to grow. That's when the person begins to mature in the things of God. That's when the person begins to mature in the things of God. And as the person begins to mature, as the tree begins to grow, and as God begins to rain down the righteousness, as God rains down the righteousness and the tree begins to grow, suddenly the tree will begin to bear fruits. The, the tree will begin to bear fruits. To bear fruits. That's when you begin to see the person the person whose ground has been broken, the person who, who, um, who, has, who has allowed God to plant his seed on his ground, that's when you find that that person will begin to manifest in all the fruits of the Spirit. 
in all the fruits of the spirit in all the fruits of the spirit what are we talking about here what do we mean by the fruits of the spirit turn your bibles quickly to the book of galatians galatians as we as we prepare to round up turn your bibles quickly to the book of galatians galatians chapter chapter 5 chapter 5 hallelujah the weed that we are talking about by the way the weed that we just talked about the tongues we talk about is what you know apostle paul in the book of galatians chapter 5 calls the works of the flesh the works of the flesh are you with me the works of the flesh you know in i am galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 from verse 19 it talks about the works of the flesh but you see we are not there anymore we have left that place we are now in the fruits the fruits of righteousness when god reigns righteousness on the ground on your life when god reigns righteousness on your land that land where the seed of god has been planted then you will see that the tree that grows will begin to reap it will begin to 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 yield fruits fruits and what are these fruits in chapter 5 of galatians chapter verse 22 it says but the fruits of the spirit the fruits of the spirit is what love joy Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against such, there is no law. The fruits of righteousness, the fruits of the Spirit, that is what comes, that's what comes out of a ground that has been broken, a ground that, that now has the seed of God planted therein. A ground that the rain of righteousness has fallen upon. A ground that has the, a, a, a ground whose whose uh, tree whose tree has taken deep roots. How does it take deep roots? The more of God, the more of the word of God you read, the deeper your roots. The deeper your roots. The more you read the word of God and you pray. Uh, the deeper your roots and as you are doing this the 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 tree grows the tree grows and fruits emerge the fruits of the spirit becomes becomes part of you amen that is when you become of value that is when you become of great substance that is when people will see you and recognize that you are different that's when you become you know precious remember we started by talking about you know the level that you go in god and then we also look at that proverbs that talks about much food being what much food is in the fallow ground of the poor you see when when the poor decides hallelujah when the poor decides that it's time to break up this ground when you decide in your life that enough of affliction when you decide in your life that enough 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 of in, enough of all the worldliness, enough of the torment from the enemy, enough, enough from the thief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. The moment you decide that, you will clear out the weed. You will drive out the strangers. You will drive out all that buy and sell. The Bible says, it is time to seek the Lord. Let me conclude again by reading to you. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. May the Lord bless the uh, reading of his word. In the name of Jesus. You have heard the word. I want you to just quietly speak to the Lord. Have you broken your fallow ground? <laughs> Do you need to break your fallow ground? Do you need to break up your fallow ground? <laughs> Do you need to break up your fallow ground? If your fallow ground is broken, have you cleared out the weed? Have you cleared out the thorns? Have you cleared out all the things that's not, that, that, that um, prevents the seed of God? from taking roots and, and bearing uh, fruits, the time has come for you to return to the Lord. The Lord says, return to me. Return to me. And if you return, then, of course, it will be well with you. 
Jeremiah chapter 4, return unto me. Return, 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 the Lord says. Return. When you return, you are breaking up your fallow ground. It says, if you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. The Lord will secure you in his pavilion. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Our dear Father in heaven, we give you praise for this glorious day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful occasion. We thank you because you, the Lord, has instructed us this day to break up our fallow ground so that we can, we can look to you and we, we, can, we can allow you to walk in us in order for us to be a, a people of value, in order for us to be useful, in order for us to be a candidate of not just of um, um, heaven, but a people that we fellowship with you even here on earth. And this we ask that you will make us to be a people of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you praise. For you, the Lord, will work righteousness in us, and we will become righteous. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Yes, the Spirit of the Lord is moving right now in the world, and in His church. Just when the hope of many is fading, God is restoring back hope. As the strength of people is failing, God is increasing strength to many. As many are heart driven away from God to sin and unrighteousness, God is calling and raising men and women in righteousness and truth, gathering them from the ends of the earth unto himself and into his glorious church. God is calling you right now to come and be part of this great move of the Holy Spirit. Join us in Christ in You Glory Church every week on our Sunday Holy Convocation service to celebrate God in praises and worship and to lift up our voice in prayer and supplication. For He hears the prayers of His people. At Christ in You Glory Church, you can be sure that the Word of God that comes through His servant, Pastor Anthony Adichelle, will meet your need. Now may the Lord grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Christ in You Glory Church, developing a people of righteousness, a planting of God.